Hey, Katie girls, welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time. It's Sunday, July 14th, and we're back. And we're going to discuss okay. episodes 9 and 10 of All Stars Season 9. We're going to talk about Rosemary's Baby Shower and the lip sync Lala Perusa Smackdown. So for those of you that don't know who we are, my name's Gary. With me is my ever-fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome. Let's have some fun. <laughs> is that what is that what we're gonna have? <laughs> uh, we might. I don't know. Uh, I mean, yeah. Like I just said, I'm like, yeah, them is okay. Like they n nothing kind of like you know shook yeah. my world something, in that case. Something. Something. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just like. <sighs> <laughs> Let me, I'm looking uh -oh. at what I, uh, looking at what you put in the doc. And you're yeah, like, because, like... okay, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it eventually. I, mean, I was gonna, I was gonna spill some tea right now, and I'm like, mm, I think I am Ooh. gonna say something later. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, sorry, like, <laughs> not very good podcasting <laughs> at the beginning. People are like, what the hell's going on? Well, that's sometimes how it is. I know. Are you ready to jump into our first segment? Let's do it. All right. Racers, start your engines and may the best drag queen win. Unless you've got bursitis and you can't lift your arm. <laughs> I am not letting go of that. I even pointed out to my friends when I was visiting him and I was down in Cincinnati and we watched it. And I pointed out and I was like, did y'all notice how she doesn't raise her arm? And they're like, what? So they rewound it. We watched it. And they were like. And I, I mimicked for them how, like, 13, 14 seasons, it was way up there, like Statue of Liberty. And then all of a sudden it just turned into meh. Yeah, but it didn't even do that, Damon. It's like, I like know. it just like it wasn't gradual. It was just sudden. Yeah. It wasn't a light switch dimmer. It was like, eh, like, and I was like, what the hell's that about? Anyways, that's not what we're gonna discuss right now, though. So, <laughs> so put the pedal to the metal. This is where we talk about kind of three category areas. We we group um, particular things that stand out to us in these per, uh, these two episodes. So we've got serves which are the positive things. Like we would definitely want to recognize, give some kudos for that kind of stuff. Swerves, which are like basically road hazards in this drag race, you probably should have avoided. Like things you mm. um, could have done better, probably we feel should have known to do better, maybe. And then nerve, which could be either like, mama, you got nerve for doing that very positive or girl, you got some goddamn nerve. Like, like what in the hell were you thinking? like perhaps total backfire so with that being said uh damon what do you got what are you giving a serve for i'm intrigued by the way you wrote this oh so i am giving the serve actually to just one of the lip syncs so we had the lip sync lala for the smackdown and we had some really great lip syncs in that one but my favorite my personal favorite um believe it or not was the when i grew up lip sync by with plastic and banshee pretty sure that's what it was yeah okay um it's a song i love seeing queens perform like just off the bat like it's a fun song it's been around for a while and um and i really enjoyed what they did with it um and i had fun and i really like that i mean they got pretty much naked but that's you know <laughs> besides the point uh but it was it was a good lip sync it was i i don't want to call it like say a classic lip sync but it was a one that showed off talent well um and was a unique take that i hadn't seen in a while for the song so um kudos to plastique and um uh, banji for that lip sync um that i mean i i'm gonna say something controversial yet brave um i don't think the person who won that one should have won that one but production tan made it happen that way I disagree. Oh, you do? I do. Oh. To quote many a thing, and I don't have the sound clip at the ready, she don't know the words. Mm. And hasn't known the words. Mm. Five times in a row. Mm. She pretty. She she dances. She pounds her pussy. Like. Literally. She, she don't know the words, though. And I'm like, it's called a lip sync. You got to move your lips to the words and make them actually look like you're singing it, not flail around and be all like, you know, flouncy bouncy, you know, in, in, you know, 
gorgeous mm. doing it. That's my opinion on that. So I completely disagree. I think Vanjie absolutely deserved to win it, even though she looked okay. like a Fredericks of Hollywood hooker. So <laughs> I just I, I wasn't that impressed. Okay. And it's funny because I didn't really when I read that I was like, I forgot that was even the name of the song. I don't know that song very well, to be honest. So I was just like, okay. So I guess because I don't know the song, I was paying more attention to what they were actually doing. Maybe. And I was like, wow, you are really seeming to do a lot of distractionary things over here, closer to the judges, and you seem to actually try to work, like, the whole stage and show off a lot of stuff. And, baby, baby, Vanjie showed off that ass. Oh, like, yes. Like, I didn't know yeah. that Vanjie had that ass. I mean, maybe I did and I forgot because she reintroduced it. And I was like, yeah. oh, okay. Mm. I, I see that. You mm -hmm. paid. You paid for it. You paid very good money for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm saying that because I Are believe you? there's a rumor that she had a BBL and it was totally worth it. Yeah, very lovely. But <laughs> yeah, but like very lovely. Yeah, I just yeah. I I'm like this to me is well I'll, I'll circle back around on it anyways. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you. I mean I yeah I, I think it's valid to to look at it from that way, but um. From a competitive standpoint, I just you you don't agree. You think that well, I think I would have I would have given it to her if I felt she knew the lyrics and the words, mm. and did all of and, that. Yeah, and my my feeling is the reason. So I said production tan because this is like they made a point of mentioning a lot of things like the queens were mentioning things about like i've lost four lip syncs or i've never lost a lip sync roxy kind of thing and mm -hmm. and you know this this season you know that's true for plastic and now it's five but uh right <laughs> but like it just like when i like the production hand is just to like keep the narrative going yes yeah Yes. Yeah. Anywho. Gary, how about you? Um, I said I want to give a sir for Got Mix Black Pearl Runway mm. because it was so spot on. Like, I don't mm -hmm. I can't imagine what else Got Mick would have done. The moment yeah. they turned the corner and presented that, I was like, of course. Right. Like, and I don't mean that to be disparaging or, or like I'm, you know trying to be shady i'm like wow look at what you served up like you went and then it got me thinking and i was like and i think it was on uh fashion photo review or pit stop mm -hmm. no pit stop they were talking about how Gottmik was really the only one that went with a color of pearl when there's more options out there right so you could have done like a lavender pearl you could have done a pink, pink like pearl, pearl. Right. like there was a lot of things that and none of the queens did that except for got Mick. and so yeah. i think i want to definitely recognize game yeah. that got Mick, you know served up now i will say it's not my favorite of the fashions of the runways true because the the skeletal frame thing like mm -hmm. just didn't kind of fully work for me. It also felt like the like the the outfit was a little unfinished, as in it kind of like stopped around the abdomen to the waist, and there wasn't much else like from yeah. that point down. Like so it I'm, seemed very I'm top heavy. A, I'm looking at a a video, and I've I've paused it at a certain point, and it's clear that there was a design here, mm -hmm. but you get very like you said very limited on the pearls once you get down like there's a like a rib cage kind of mm -hmm. moment and there's these big like epaulets on the shoulders and then she's got some little hip things that are be pearled instead of be dazzled and then there's just lines coming right. down now on the arms just i'm just trying to give context on the arms the area of pearl is thicker and mm. it looks very much like, say, a bone of an arm, like the bones of an arm. Right. The ones on the legs just look like straight lines. Right. And I, it, that's why I mean, like, I think it wasn't fully yeah. fleshed out or fully finished yeah. or whatever, because I feel like it was a really strong presence that you were trying to give, like, an exoskeleton mm. or something, like, yeah. aspect of things. And, like, it just kind of didn't finish, which seemed strange to me. So I was like, but. I still want to give the serve because it definitely stood out when you put them side by side. 
Oh, it's so good. Because there was a lot of white ivory kind of like like essence of looks for the right. most part. And then there's just Gottmik who's sticking true to their black and white, like kind of gothy um, mm -hmm. glamour perspective thing, you know? Right. And so I was like, okay, yeah, I, I hear you on that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I, I do want to give a side note. Um, I just wish Nina's outfit had looked better on mm. the runway. It wasn't until fashion photo review when Raja and Raven were looking at it, and they were talking about all the pearls on it. And then you kind of zoomed in a little bit. I was like, Oh, there were pearls all over that thing. You just couldn't yeah. really see them. Yeah. All that. Well, so it, it kind of says to me, I wish they'd made them like about six times bigger, right. like on the actual dress itself. Mm -hmm. And maybe had encrusted some in, in the face. I thought the yeah. the the glass not glasses but like the the mask applique thing was kind of cool mm -hmm. but I also agree I think Bussy said the hair should have been bigger like like it's just yeah, yeah. it it needed there, some finesse it need like love Nina love Nina but there are moments I I often the main concern I have with Nina is that sometimes to be blunt she doesn't know how to proportionize in a way. Sometimes you can, and sometimes you can't, and it's just never consistent. And that's sort of been my main issue with her. She has an aesthetic, and don't get me wrong, that's great for her, but it's not always the greatest for what we're doing. But I do appreciate that Nina still stays Nina. And Well, so that is something interesting, because all of Nina's like lip sync outfits quote unquote whatever you want to call that the mm -hmm. stuff that she brought that i guess is probably proper part of her regular repertoire is really done like right like it's very much camp but it's definitely done i heard a rumor i heard a rumor <laughs> sorry get out of my head uh thank you umbrella academy um mm -hmm. i heard a rumor that nina was last informed Mm. with like just a couple weeks oh wow and so if that's true i think it reflects in, in her what she brought as in like the stuff that went to the theme because it is a huge scramble if you've only got two three four four weeks even like to pull stuff together you've got to be like you already have to have the rolodex repertoire of all the designers Mm -hmm. and they have your proportions you know what i mean like you know what and right. your measurements and all that kind of stuff to figure out how to do things and i feel like that might have been an impact i'm just saying yeah all right so with that uh let's move into swerves <laughs> actually i should probably change that to that Oop. to that but okay um, okay so I have, I wrote the oddest risical. So Rosemary's baby shower was interesting. That's one way to put it. That is a way to put it. <laughs> um, how do I say this? Well, it, it, it was an interesting culmination of a lot of story art. And I will admit, I have not seen the original, like, Rosemary's Baby. I haven't seen that movie. Same. Um, so, if this kitschy, like, stuff is a part of it, I don't know that. But it felt very forced. Like, we've got to have eight characters, because there's eight queens on stage. Mm -hmm. And so, we have to give everyone an opportunity, essentially, mm -hmm. is the way it works. And... So, you know, thank you, Bussy Queen, for giving, because apparently Bussy Queen really likes the movie, original movie, so right. she knows a lot about it. So she was talking about the landlord character that um, Angeria and Chanel played. They kind of split her in half. Correct. And then, you know, there's obviously Rose, you know, Rosemary and all of that stuff. But the thing that bothered me the most about the musical the musical, I should say, was the addition of the three, like, horror film or whatever you want to call it, you know, things. 
Um, and also adding to that, like they were then like modern sensations. So, um, yeah. So it just it just felt very. It felt odd. It was odd. It was just odd. I I don't want to say like I I will say. It was not the greatest musical they have done. I don't know where that's coming from. I just mean this in the nicest way possible. You know, Michelle, I don't know what you you were smoking, but like it just, I would not call this the greatest musical. Did right. everyone play in a way? Yes, I think everyone did a really good job of what they were presented. Right. But to call this the greatest musical that they, she's ever seen. Right. Mm, I don't I don't think so. I, I don't think so. It was okay. Yeah, it very Maybe. much feels like she was fed that line. Mm-hmm. Or something. Because it just it didn't like I my person I'm not gonna give like put everyone on like a numbers or what, but I like the one when I think of when you say like best musical, I tend to think of um Mulan Rue and a couple other ones that come to mind. And the like oh god. It, it's gone. Anyway. Mulan Rue is the one that comes to my mind first off. It may not be the greatest for me, but I just there's some that I feel like could have been this could have been better. But the way that they were forcing this story was weird right but everyone had a moment everyone had their sign you know since no one could go home you get what you get i mean i think that's fair um i think you're going to talk about it later right uh, yeah yes. like i i'm in a hundred percent two hundred percent agreement with you that those three particular characters that they inserted just don't work Right. Just don't make sense. Right. Um, I do want to recognize that Nina was the star, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. The moment she came on the screen, I literally screamed out loud. Right. Because I knew who she was portraying from a horror genre film. Yeah. And so... Like, I don't know how many people, especially younger, caught that she was representing Poltergeist. Mm hmm And in Poltergeist, that character, that woman, is like four foot something. Right. So the moment she came out with that hair and those glasses and the outfit, I screamed because I was like, now that's funny. Like, right. that's comedic because, like, Nina's like six plus. So like 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 instead of giving it to like Georges or possibly Vangie as one of the smallest queens on on like the the cast, they instead gave it to like one of the biggest. And I just thought that was so hysterical to me that she comes walking through the door and I was like, oh my god, no, they did not. And that like right. that to me was the highlight. And of course, Nina, you know, absolutely knows how to like, you know, perform. So that to me was was one of the best parts it was good it was very good but i agree with you i haven't seen the original so i want to thank bussy for like giving the breakdown and really talking about like the plot and like what these things represented and blah 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 because i was like okay and this yeah. is why i said i think some people i think that episode i don't want to say it was polarizing but i think some people really loved it but i think the right. people that really loved it have seen the cult classic movie maybe and maybe and, that's what it is and so to them it made sense right to me, not so much. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's why it's very. I don't. I don't get it. Like yeah. maybe that's what it is. So anyway, Gary, what about you? What is your swerve? <laughs> um, so Georges and Roxy, both of them for their Pearl Runway. Mm. Georges is kind of obvi. Yeah. Baby, baby, baby. Like, did you like this is not a this is not a sewing challenge. This is not a, a, a crafting workroom challenge week, but that's exactly what your outfit looked like. 
That was my interpretation. I was like, oh, so we take a bolt of fabric, we wrap it around ourselves, we rouge it a little bit, and then we add a, sh- like, not even a shit ton. We add a whole bunch of pearls. Mm-hmm. Ta-da! And I didn't yeah. like her hair. A lot of people kept talking about how it was, like, this, like, callback to Bride of Frankenstein, like, thing. Yeah. And I was like, no. I don't, I didn't get that. Not exactly. I- like, I was actually disappointed by the size of the stones pearls whatever that were in the 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 wig like i was just like the it should be bigger should be more like i don't know it, it just it didn't work it for me yeah so, i'm looking I'm, yeah i'm looking at the picture again and okay i'm gonna i'm gonna no it's not bright or frankenstein like just point blank period like i'm just gonna say that right now there are two strands of like right. lines of pearls that are going up the wig mm-hmm. this dark this black wig or dark you know dark wig right um but they're 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 kind of close together and connected the bride of frankenstein has the two white like full-on streaks going up on the side um right and i think in the bride of frankenstein like not the mel brooks parody Right, right, Young right. Frankenstein. But I think in the in the original, they're like towards the temples. Yeah. But I think in the Bride of Frankenstein, it looks like they're coming out the ears. <laughs> like they're way over. Yeah, anyways. yeah, yeah. Um, but again, this is this is this is this is mm, like yeah. <sighs> no. So it so that really kind of underwhelmed me. And then as much as don't get me wrong, Roxy looks good. Roxy pretty much always looks good in an outfit. I was underwhelmed by the choice that she did for the pearl runway because i was like i think you already had that in your closet yeah like because because we know she loves this this sling scoochy you know like scooped deal yeah that gives her a lot of movement and gives her you know the ability to show off you know her body and her moves and all that stuff and and that's great she looks good she looks damn good but hmm. Like I just it, like yeah. out of, out of the selections, I was like, "Ooh, girl, uh, were you in the workroom watching them put all, but watching these other girls put their stuff on?" I go, "Oh shit, yeah." Like, and because because look at your girl, plastique. <laughs> you know, like like oh okay, you brought that, yeah. and here I am with my strings of beads. You know, like mm-hmm. pearls, but yeah. So yeah. that that was a that was a swerve for me. I was just kind of I was like, eh, okay, yeah. And like I'm, I'm looking at again. I'm looking at the pictures. Thank you, um, the Drag Race Ricky, because it helps a lot. And it feels so. It feels farce. Yeah. Like it, like it does. Don't get me wrong. It doesn't look sparse, but looking at this outfit and looking at you know what's happening, it feels sparse, and that's not. It's not really, but it is. <laughs> like I look at the arms, and like she's got like basically a strand like on the glove. She's got pearls, and they're sort of hanging down. And it, you know, it looks. Sounds gonna sound bad. It looks like she made it, which she probably did. Right. What I realized is, I would have appreciated if the sco- if the the swoops, whatever you want to call them, strands. Mm-hmm. For Mm -hmm. the upper portion were a lot shorter up, and Mm -hmm. she had been so bold as to make a pair of pants of nothing but Mm. pearl strands. Mm. I would have been super impressed with that. Yeah. Like, to have, like, a full body, but, like, bring together these different, like, kind of concept elements. It's just, like, I I, I agree. When you said sparse, I was like, "Mm, you know, that was kind of it. Like, there was a lot of skin, quote, unquote, compared to, like, pearl. and. And unfortunately for Roxy, and I will say this now, it doesn't like I noted. I clocked it during the when she was walking. Mm-hmm. The the bodysuit, the new suit that this is these these pearls are attached to, yeah. is not quite hugging her figure up oh. top. So mm. you get a lot of like you get that you get this like this like oh. gap, and it breaks the illusion. I I thought you were talking about the color. Well, and and here's the I, other I, thing is we know that the lighting on that that television stage just 
really screws with a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, like, I think that also did not help. Yeah. Nude on, I hate, I, nude on the drag race runway stage is nearly impossible. Well, there's so much light. There is. So here's the weird thing. It's almost like you need something over the nude to make it work. Like, remember when Nina did her design runway and she had that mm -hmm. sheer kind of fabric with the the nude underneath it? I thought mm -hmm. that worked really, really well. But I think that's because, not to use a big word, I think the, the sheer obfuscates the nude. So, like, you don't mm -hmm. quite notice it as much. But, I mean, look at what happened in the lip sync. Chanel wore that um spangly dancing number with the nude panel illusion down the middle this huge deep chevron like you know piece and mm -hmm. i was like i a part of me was like is that supposed to be nude illusion because that does not look nude like yeah it's like this kind of strange beigey champagne something yeah. color and it's yeah. not really her skin color, but it's not going with anything else either. Like it was so like not distracting, but confusing to me because I was kind of like, yeah. why, why that color? Why not? Why not something else that really looked yeah. like a color instead of something that kind of looks like a skin tone that isn't really right? Anyways, yeah. Like for looking at this picture of Roxy's dress, I love the headpiece. I think that's really pretty, and I think keeping that you don't need to change at all. Mm -hmm. The outfit I think needs if you're going to do this illusion kind of thing, you need it to double. The amount of pearls everywhere on the gloves, on the on the on the on the bodysuit itself, and then done something pearl with your shoes. If you're not going to wear it like a pant, like you said, then I need something down below to add to the pearl everywhere else. Right. Some big like white you know things on the shoes to kind of give it that add a bit to this illusion of pearl. Throw a throw a like a quick little right anklet around the, with the pearls around your ankle you know anyway um i will say this and i'm curious about your thoughts i actually really like chanel's runway yeah it I was so outside the box yeah like like and i get that some people are like oh it's very club kid it's very like you know fantasy or whatever and i'm like well I'm like, yeah. I, I hear you on that, but I also appreciated that it was just not, it was not expected. Yeah. Like everyone else kind of served what you thought you were going to get for that theme. Mm -hmm. And then she came around the corner and she was like, baby, I'm going to give you like artistic, like, you know, very different interpretation uh, kind of deal. And I was like, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I see you. So, yeah. Um Let's yeah. move on to Nerve. Uh, I'm very intrigued, Damon. What are you giving Nerve for? Oh, so this is a good Nerve. Okay. So, so focus on the past. Christine W. is what I wrote. Mm -hmm. um, so during Untucked, um, after the Rosemary baby, so Christine W. has been this staunch LGBT ally for forever, and her music has been around forever. And I appreciated the her talking to the queen mm. about that and her telling why she was doing it, mm -hmm. you know, her, her background and how, you know, she was religious. And I believe that's what I'm remembering, but it just was very much a good moment. There's been some, I don't know who you are. Um, um, guest judges. And then there's been ones like this where I, I'm like, Oh, okay. Right. Right. And I love when they get an opportunity to talk with the queen. Yeah. And this one in particular has been important because in this time and what we're doing and everything, it's always good to see that despite all of that, there's still allies out there. There are still people out there that are, I would hope, <laughs> are willing to fight for our rights and such. Right. And Christine has been doing it, it seems like, for, for you know, a long time. Mm -hmm. And... um and just got to give props to that. And I think it took a, it always takes nerve for queens, like for people like this to come out and talk about this and be on the show when it could potentially be a problem or it could potentially detriment their careers. But yeah, I don't think Christine W cares, but, <laughs> but to me, it feels very good to have. No, you're right. Um, I mean, I think she's been making music for, I want to say 20 years or so. Not longer. Um, 
Yeah, so I mean, I knew who she was, and I agree with you. Like compared to other judges, absolutely. Like, please bring her back. Like I thought her her talking to the queens and untucked was so insightful. Yeah. Like it wasn't yeah. just kind of like serving, you know. Oh hi, blah blah blah. Yeah. Like, um. Yeah. So I I agree absolutely. Yeah. Very much so. And you're not wrong to call her a queen. Yeah. Like like yeah. She That's was nice. done up, girl. Like oh yeah, <laughs> I was like I was like that's not all your real hair like <laughs> I was like she got done up for this show good for her agreed um I wow. said oh yeah now I'm really gonna get into it <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you no guesses as to who this is about it's a shade it's a shade it's fact it's fact girl. Okay. Being pretty is not enough. Mm. And it is so evident. We are 10 episodes in. Plastique, baby, you give great face. You you know how to serve a look. Like, you have had amazing runway things. And you even may be trying to go for a minor in mathematics. But <laughs> you are not a lip syncer. Yeah. You're a pretty girl and you like pull like dancing stunts when you when you perform and I'm not criticizing. I'm I'm trying to point out that like she is a different style of queen. Right. Because some are some are very like camp theatrical. Some are very like like artistic interpretive. Some, uh-huh. you know, as was discussed from the Smackdown you know, it was it was kind of understood why Roxy and Chanel were the last two standing. Mm. I mean, there's a couple of factors. They're older queens. They've been performing for a long time. They know how to really perform. And, like, if you're going to do anything to win over the host, Mama Roo, like, you're going to actually serve, like, freaking lip syncs. And so, like, I just... Like, Plastique isn't even a shablam girl. Do you know what I mean? Like, she's not of that era from, what, six years ago where everybody was doing desk drops, like, you know, and and pounding their pussy on the floor and, like, all this kind of crazy, like, stuff. Like, I just, like, there are parts of me that are like, oh, I'm impressed. Like, you can bend your body and you can do these things. But at the same time, I was like, I already laid into it earlier. I was like, girl, you got to know the words. It's called a lip sync. So here's the thing for me. If I was to go someplace and Plastique was to be performing, I, based on what I've seen from the season, I would not be that interested in going up and giving her a dollar. Mm. It doesn't mean that she doesn't deserve the dollar, but I know she got booked. She got paid coin for the gig. Mm -hmm. Tips are extra. Right. So you're not moving me. I don't feel (sighs) compelled. I'm not going to pay right. the five dollar ridiculous fucking fee from the ATM to take out money to pay you a tip. So, like, that's kind of my like, measurement. <laughs> yeah, and it's telling. It's rather telling when you have won four times or been in the top four times, mm-hmm. and there is not a dollar to your charity. So this is what I was alluding to earlier. So the scuttlebutt rumor is something – there's there's strife between Plastique and her charity. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the story is. I kind of get the – it's been alluded to that she doesn't really care for her charity or something else. And so there's a part of me that wonders if, like, that's all just bullshit because of the fact that she knew in this season she hardly won them any money at all. Which Mm -hmm. is really a crazy storyline. Like, you're the quote-unquote prettiest queen there. Like, you've been slaying the runway so much, and yet not a a penny, not a drop drop in the bucket for her charity. Like, that's wild. Wild. Yeah. So. Again, it just feels odd. And I think, again, I love, I, I think you, like, she gives great faith. She has tore everyone to shreds with runway, like just point blank period. Yeah. She's always prepared for that. 
you got to lip sync on this show. You've got to know how to do it. And this, like I was, I gave her props for the When I Grow Up lip sync. And I feel that is the best she has done. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. And I feel, it feels weird to me that, I will say this. Okay. This is me talking about the show overall. Mm-hmm. And I've been feeling a certain kind of way about it. Um, I get the 10000 for the winner of the lip sync. But I feel like since this is a charity kind of show, mm-hmm. that maybe the the person who lost mm-hmm. should still be getting something. Not ten thousand, maybe a thousand, maybe twenty five hundred, something to like make the not stakes higher, but make it so that no matter who wins, the charities don't lose out on something. Right. I've heard a couple theories as to how this could be better, and the one I kind of like the best is it should be that the top two queens get automatic money for their charity, and then you lip sync for a badge. Mm. So the badge has – right. The badge has levity. Like it has really good importance that you want to win the – lip sync because you want the badge instead it's reversed you automatically get the badge now you're trying to win money for your charity and it kind of seems like from time to time these queens don't care about their charities like the competition doesn't care about the charities if the charity is the Mm. focus why aren't the charities getting all the money that's the issue with this with this season it's almost Mm. like the charities were an afterthought it's almost like all the queens that they were reaching out to said they were not interested in all stars until they decided, oh, well, what if we do it for charity? And then suddenly they start getting people interested. Chanel strikes me as the most authentic queen of this entire cast that is absolutely in it for the charity. Vanji is the one who says it the most that it's for charity, but it's becoming a laugh line. And I think it's like because because Vanji's just there for a good time. Vanji's just there to collect a check like. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and, and so I just, and I'm not criticizing her. Like, I think she just has a very different vision and a perspective on it. She's like, I don't care if I win. I'm just here to have fun. And it's for charity. Right. Like, right. and so, yeah, it's wild. This season is so wild to me. And she, and yeah. Plastique doesn't have any money yeah. right now. So yeah. I think there may be a spin coming up in the finale that you get X amount of dollars for every badge. Mm. I think they're going to end up adding that as another element so that everybody definitely has money for their charities. Yeah. So like say so, so say like 5000 for each badge. Like right. you know what I mean that really helps a lot because that it it bumps up the totals of the folks. So like someone like George's suddenly is would get another $20,000. Uh, right. Someone like Nina would get another ten thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Like, and right, actually, right, right. Plastique would get twenty thousand. She'd go from zero yeah. to twenty thousand. Like, so yeah. yeah. Like, I, I feel like I feel like there's more money on the table that isn't being delivered this season. And I think they did. Re- I think they just like kind of. I don't know. Like, it was just weird. It just some of the feels, setup. It again. It I there's a part of me that worries, and this is kind of what I was alluding to, in like in a sense, like my hope is something happens in these next two episodes that makes this all worthwhile well something has to happen uh because did you see the preview for the next episode yeah 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 (laughs) the queens are voting yeah with lipsticks i want to know what they're voting for i do too i have a theory i have a theory They're voting for a queen that deserves one or two badges, and it can't be themselves. Mm. So they have to pick one of the other seven. Mm. That's my theory. And that's because Nina, they used the clip where Nina was the most, like, frustrated slash distraught about the voting thing. And she kind of said, like, like she might be messing something up or whatever. And I was kind of like, hmm. I'm like, what could that possibly be? So, anyways. Right. Hmm. There's that. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Anywho. You ready to move on to our next segment? Let's do it.
All right, Kitten, so these are the snaps and eye rolls, a.k.a. the hits and misses. Uh, these would be the things we want to give shout-outs to because these were the highs and the lows of these particular episodes. So we're giving snaps to the things that really we feel like deserve it, and then we are just rolling our eyes like like Cupid all crazy because, like, no ma'am. Damon, what are you giving snaps for? So I'm giving snaps to Chanel's comeback. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel... Okay, let's be honest. Um, given the height that we we gave to Chanel mm-hmm. coming back on the show, mm-hmm. all the stuff that they did, mm-hmm. it felt very odd that she went eight episodes not winning a damn thing. Right. It just felt like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And here we are in the final hours, and she went from zero to three. Mm-hmm. Crazy, huh? Right. But I'm going to say something a little controversial, right? I don't think she should have won the one for the for the musical. I'm just going to say it. I don't think she should have, but that's me personally. Um, I think this, again, was sort of like, hey, we need to give her something. <laughs> Sounds bad, but that's the way I feel. I Well, I think production started seeing the writing on the wall, a.k.a. Mm-hmm. like the social media backlash that they were going to get. Because oh, if they went another episode or two without giving her any badges, like, mm-hmm. it was going to yeah. really beg the question. Because I feel like there is a fan base with Chanel that feels like... like chanel is a consummate professional right paints like nobody else can Mm -hmm. perform she owns she says i do not buck like i am not this gymnastics like you know Mm -hmm. routine girl i serve face i serve mouth i serve handography i mean that that conversation in the untucked thing i was just like I was yeah. like, yes, 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 yes. Like, yeah. like Chanel is in the epitome of some of the height of old school drag, quote unquote. Like, you know that that we know of from past decades. So, right. I agree. Yeah. I feel like there was a little bit of production involved to get her to where mm-hmm. she is, but she did go from nothing to three out of nowhere, baby. So, yeah, I was very and happy again, about that. It, it's rather wonderful, and. You know, I'm just, you know, it, it, there's a lot of stuff going on that, again, maybe production has a say. So, for example, the only person that really talked about, or at least that we saw talk about, who they were given, to, who they would give their badge to when they were, the episode where they were, had to, was George's. And George's was the only person who out loud said who she would specifically give her badge to. Correct. And she said Chanel. So. And she didn't backtrack on that when. Right. Um, yeah. So it made perfect have. sense that should that that production used that to their benefit, and mm-hmm. was like, well, at least Chanel's going to get a badge, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. And then they decided, well, actually, we can help her out by mm-hmm. letting her win. Yeah. Giving her the win, I should say, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. she gets two. Right. In that case, now I do think. It was very noble of Chanel to give her extra badge to Georges. Mm-hmm. I think it would have been better to give it to somebody else. And I agree with a certain podcast I listened to that said they would have peed themselves that it would have been the drama of the season if Chanel said, you know what? Gosh darn it, I'm worth it. I'm keeping this extra badge. <laughs> I would have loved that. But, you know, I doubt – well, I doubt she's they... she's She's really trying to distance herself from season one, Chanel. Yeah. It is so obvious to me that she does not want to portray yeah. or live up to the reputation of right. what she did in the first season. She's trying to show how much she's matured and grown. And I absolutely applaud you, girl. I love it. Yeah. But there yeah. is a huge, rabid fan base that just wants an ounce, just wants a taste <laughs> just a of, little, that, just a little nibble. of that season just, one, just... Chanel, that was so egotistical. 
Like, mm-hmm. but she was egotistical because she knew that her shit didn't stink. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. no, like yeah. it was so almost unclockable with her. So yeah, wild, 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 wild. Wild. So yeah, giving giving my, giving my snaps to her and all that she's done and the whole old school like I am entranced the the times we've seen Chanel like mm-hmm. these last few lip syncs. I, I love what she does. Yeah. Yeah. Anywho. Gary. Honey, we have to give up the, the snaps for recognizing the park and bark. They actually mm. talk about it. They define it. Like I love I think it's Nina like actually gives it a levity of moment and says how this is an art form. There's a craft to this and not everybody can do it. Yeah. And I was like, yes, like every time. OK, so every time <laughs> I just realized I leaned into the camera every time <laughs> a queen. There's a there's a kind of a ballad song. There's like a mid tempo song. And every time one queen decides to really reel it in and not do a lot and just emote. There's usually another queen who is not doing that. And it takes me back every, every, every single time to Latrice Royale and Kenya Michaels and how yeah. Latrice looks like, like the queen of the world and Latrice or, and then Kenya looks like an absolute Ding dong. Like, like this, like <laughs> running all over the stage and doing these arm flails and these like movements and stuff like that. And it's like, girl, no, you are, you are, it is so obvious you were not going to win. Like, there is no way you could win this lip sync because Latrice is giving you emotion. Latrice is giving you everything. Mm-hmm. And you were just eating mm-hmm. out of the palm of her hand. And that is what Park and Bark does. Like, it, it just pulls you in. And they were talking about a queen I never heard of before. I wish I knew what their name was. Um, that they uh, said that has this laser focus and like never blinks. Um, I write it down. I didn't. I thought and, I did. And I, I feel was like just, I think Tommy Ross. Was yes. The name. Yes. 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 Yeah. And I was like, I got. I got to find out who this queen is. Like, wow. Like, I mean, but but that goes to show. You know, there is something to be said for the for the art form, especially that style. Um, as a sidebar, I also appreciate that they talked about um, Tandy Iman Dupree and the Wonder mm-hmm. Woman. Like they 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 showed the whole segment. They like clipped in the previous season where they talk about that whole thing and how that came about. Like and the queens losing their minds in the workroom when it got revealed that that was her yeah. daughter. Yeah. Um. This is what I love about this particular show is when they start honoring and and teaching the children's, if you will, with the history and talking about these things. Infamously, in a regular season, there's like an icon award, blah, blah, blah. And that always feels kind of trite to me because right. it's so obvious that they're like trying to use it as a teachable moment instead of this other stuff that's just inserted in there. Like in today's day and age, I think this works better. This moment where they kind of ha- focus on it and they make it a little segment. It doesn't have to be a lot. And you talk about it and you get some recognition um, out of that stuff. And it, and it helps people understand that there is something to that. And that is probably, personally for me, the drag that has really spoke to me the most over the decades is seeing a queen who completely embodies a storyline and an emotion and delivers it because, and I know not all of them can do it because it's acting. Yeah. It's acting and portraying something very specific and you really kind of get drawn into that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. There are, like you said, there are very few queens that can do this and it is an art form and it is something that I, I don't want to say you should strive for, any queen should strive for, be blunt you either got it or you don't like it is it is very hard to finesse that now it i i don't want to say it's gone away but there are a lot of queens now because of the popularity of drag Mm -hmm. that could potentially do a number and park and bark and get the tips and get the dollars and not have to put a lot of effort into it Mm. That's to me is a different kind of park and bark. 
I don't want to. I don't know what I want to call that. But it's just like a queen that already has a name and just is able to well, get out there and you know grab the dollar. Right, right, right. So this is it. I think what you're what you're alluding to is I would say they're they're parking and they're picking cabbage. Right. So they're just like they're just taking the money as uh-huh. it's being like introduced to them and they're not moving around a whole lot. And there is nothing wrong with that because I have seen some yeah. fabulous queens can do that. Yeah. Park and Bark is, is a different level, though, because mm-hmm. Park and Bark is almost like you're not there. The audience is not there. Mm-hmm. The queen is in a is in their own world doing their own thing and is just like really having a moment and you and you really kind of get drawn in in a certain way i will say this i think there's those queens that do it really well they have an innate skill to be able to do it i think you can learn it but it is not easy just like you know the infamous is she gonna jump from there uh (laughs) you know like with aja like i mean that's a whole other skill thing that has to be learned you know um laganja dropping from the ceiling you know like for her entrance as an assassin like yeah like you know you have to be yeah. able to know that you can do that stuff you just don't do it on a whim at least you shouldn't because you'll probably break a yeah. goddamn hip yeah. um yeah. Worse. <laughs> so yeah i mean i i think that like i wanted to give snaps i just that was one yeah. of my favorite parts was that they, I they called it out they labeled it they talked about it and they they yeah. honored it so to speak that th- i will i admit i really love i didn't write a lot of notes normally i'll write notes for even untucked not as many but I didn't write a lot for this one. And the main reason was because I love that they were having this conversation mm-hmm. about this legendary stuff that I think Queens can, um, I'm going to say astound, but like live up to or look up to in a way. Well, I mean, look at what Chanel did. She opened the box of knowledge in Untucked and Talked About the hand thing for her is something she took from showgirls in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, isn't that interesting? That Chanel noticed something and decided to like really kind of finesse and incorporate that. Delta Work talks about it a lot. She Mm. naturally, in boy or in, in female drag, uses her hands all the time. And she's talked about it openly. She's been clocked on it. And she said, it's just where I come from. The women in my family, they talk with their hands a lot. And she said, and that's just what I do. And so she does it all the time. And I think it's a thing that she kind of gets known for. And what I find intriguing about it is this whole concept of, like, everything is a layer. Mm -hmm. So, like, you'll hear people critique her or give feedback about, like, you know, her hair needs to be bigger. She doesn't have jewelry. She's missing a thing. Like, all of that is layers to the thing that you're doing. And I feel like body movement is another piece of that. Right. Moving your mouth and your facial muscles, like in your eyes, like all of that is a piece of it as well. So, yes. Yeah. For sure. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> Eye rolls, <laughs> David. Uh, go ahead. I'm, 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 again, intrigued. So I put down filling time. And, and it's essentially a production situation. These past two episodes, considering what they were doing there was a lot of workroom filler a lot of like them talking about stuff and having conversations about things and sometimes it's great and sometimes it's not you know we had a moment in the beginning i think of this last episode where we find out that apparently vanji and roxy i don't want them to say hooked up but or something like they they, they did something they flirted you know, for a while, whatever. And it just, it's like, right. Hmm. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't need to know that. There, there, there's no need for, why is that? Like, there's, it, it, it came out of nowhere because we don't know what they were talking about. It just mm. sort of happened and we just sort of dropped it. And like, well, what's going so on? the way they made it work was Van, or someone said they were dreaming of Vanjie. Oh, Georgia. She- Georgia said she had a dream about Vanjie and she was chasing her with a water hose or something like that. Yeah. And yeah. everybody thought it was like sort of sexy or whatever. And she's like, no, no, it wasn't like that. And I think that's the thread that connects to this, like, not quite Kai Kai thing yeah. 
between other okay. cast members because I think there is sort of a reference that like at this point, like we are we are on the tenth episode, and so everybody's like, oh, it's been ten weeks. No, it hasn't been a full two and a half months. It's probably been more like six weeks. Yeah, but it's been long enough that they are all sequestered. And they, they have not had outlets. They don't have their fiancés, their husbands, their boyfriends. Right. Like, they probably can't do anything with the production staff, you know. They can't. You know that. Well, uh, I mean, sometimes I don't think Sarge is available. I'm just going to say that. Um, <laughs> baby. I know everybody, like, moons over Bruno. And don't get me wrong. He's a very handsome-looking man. He, he also strikes me as a himbo so much. Um but the but yeah. the thing is, like you know, they kind of have needs that you know they are, quote unquote, you know, not all drag all the time. So yeah, right. I so that when that came up, I was like, it's funny that you said like I didn't need to know that I wasn't interested, and I'm like, I kind of agree. But then when I found out, I was like, oh, I am very, very mm. like drawn in <laughs> by this because they yeah. already said earlier in the season, if anybody knows anything about Roxy, Roxy is the top. So when they said that, I was like, oh, so in essence, Vanjie's given booty hole picks and Roxy's <laughs> given given ding dong picks. Like that's what that was. I was I was very intrigued. Very. I was like, huh. Inappropriately yeah, so. I, I know it. Yeah. And and I mean that's just that that's not the only thing. There's just been a few times where it's just yeah. been like I love this show and I know that they have to fill the time. But, like, give us many challenges. Give us something for them to do. Like, these opportunities, these last two episodes, they literally went from, like, the coming into the room to here's your maxi challenge. We're doing the maxi challenge. Like, we had to do the parts of it, but we're doing the maxi challenge. Um, and, like, again, opportunities for queens to get money for their charities. Opportunities for things to happen. Right to where there could be something to be done, you know? Well, and so, that's, but instead we're... that was part of the feedback. This one podcast I listened to said, basically, I think it was something to the effect of why aren't we, why aren't we throwing money at the Queens all the time? Yeah. As in like, Hey, like here's a stupid little quick drag challenge thing or whatever. Like I need you to do this obstacle course. The one who finishes the quickest gets a thousand dollars for the charity. Right. Like just, just, just like their their idea was like sprinkle the money, like spread it out all over the place and make it constant to reinforce the importance of the charity because you're not really doing that. You make it kind of seem like the charity was an afterthought, which it might have been, or like it's not that important. Yeah, which is kind of shitty. The, and that's the thing that I'm I'm having the most issue with is mm -hmm. like if the whole thing was drag queen save the world. And this is the, the fundraising, you know, episode or season. Right. Then make it fucking fundraising. Like I just, it just. I hear you. The only people that get money are the people that win, win, win. And that. Correct. Correct. And again, unless there's something we don't know about that's going to happen in these next two episodes, and suddenly we're going to see a bunch of money get like thrown, thrust upon the charities, right. like, right? Again, the fact that Plastic has lip sync one, four badges, and has not earned a single dollar for her charity right. is ridiculous. Right. I mean, at this rate, she's going to have to sell, sell those badges on eBay just to give the charity some yes, money. Something. See us like <laughs> just yeah. auction them off and be like I'm 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 auctioning, I'm auctioning off this badge you know like something because I mean and again if the only way you win money for your charity is to to do the lip sync and to win win the challenge and lips win the lip sync there is a a latitude for failure. Right. So anyway, sorry, just ranting. Anyway, I hear you, Gary, 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 Gary. Oh yeah, we hmm. <laughs> let let's go. Let's do this. Um. Yeah. So I said a modern musical. Modern isn't quotes, and that's because I feel like 
this was just not good. Um, I already told you flat out. That I think this is the worst musical to date. Like I did not like it. No, ma'am. I want a refund. I want my money back. I would have left during intermission. I would. I would have. I, I, no, just no. <laughs> And I'm not like that. Like, I would be willing to try yeah. to give something a chance, but this was this was bad. This is so bad. Like, it, if Nina hadn't come out when she did, I probably got, got up and left the room and, like, done something else and then tried to come back. Like, I was just so not here for this. It was yeah. clunky. It was strange. It was weird. And I was so unhinged by Roxy playing Pennywise from It because – she did so good, it uh -huh. was distracting. Like, right. she looked so amazingly not her. Like, right. I still question if it was her. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It was like, I no. almost feel like there was a stunt double, like, that played that role. It was so, it was so wild. And then got Mick as uh, the, the, what's her name from The Exorcist? Yeah. Like, oh, well that outfit like the the nightgown didn't fit right it was baggy like too baggy and i get that Gottmik is just like a toothpick but my Blair. god like yeah like it was just it was so unhinged with, with rhinestone vomit right on the, on, on the it, and it, it, and and that ridiculous stunt with the spinning wig that was obviously <laughs> taped at a different time in a different way that they spliced in the edit because now the lighting is completely changed. The stage actually looks a little different. Like it was so messy. I was like, ma'am, 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 no, no, and no, just no. It's highly it, problematic yeah. for me. It just, again, it, it didn't give, it didn't get leaked. It didn't, it, <laughs> Shit, I can't even get the words out. As I say, use your words, it, girl. It it didn't live up to the hype that it seemed to have. Agreed. No, I and agree. and I don't. I mean, it was okay. Like I'll put it like that. I will give it an okay. I don't think it was great. I don't think it was was the best. God no. But you know, eh, it was okay. Like there were moments that were like nice. Um, but as you said, it felt very disjointed. It felt very, as I said, forced. We're forcing all of this together to make this thing happen. That's why it was called Baby Shower because they invited guests to the thing, and you had these three, you know, random horror slash suspense movie, you know, characters sparsed in that just was weird, and then. Like, Zanji was the was the baby, and there there was like a full grown the, baby, a full grown adult, adult baby, baby Satan with no <laughs> reference to her being a baby, right? In any way, shape, or form, and I get it; it's theater. Dis suspension of disbelief, what have you, but no. <laughs> I love you. I love yeah. I love the look. Right? Like Gorgeous. that was the wild Gorgeous. thing. Like she she delivered. She did so yeah. well. And I was like, Yeah. Wow, look at you, Vanji. Yeah. This don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Make it make What's sense. They can't. I don't know. It just. Yeah, I know. No, I know. Jesus Christ. I don't. You know. Well, not Jesus Christ because it was the devil. But whatever. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was kind of wild. Oh. So, there's that. Weird. Weird. Odd. Not the word. Yeah. Anyway, given that, go ahead. 
No, it's fine. Like I, I want to hear what other people have to think. I, I would, I would greatly appreciate that. I think people can go visit our blog at comesoutloud.com. You can leave a comment on the post. You can send us an email, comesoutloud at gmail.com. You could even call in, leave us a voicemail message. You can call 361 COL Talk. That's 361-265-8255 and leave us a voicemail. We could play it on the show or we could just discuss what you have to say um, and not play it. Um, but yeah. You can search us online uh, using Cubs Out Loud all together as one word on the social media outlets. Um, if you want to join our entourage chat for Cubs Out Loud Drag Race, you can go to tinyurl.com slash telegram hyphen C-O-L-D-R. If you want to know about uh, when the regular series shows are going to be airing live, typically to YouTube, you can go to tinyurl.com slash calendar, that's C-A-L-E-N-D-A-R hyphen C-O-L, and you can get merch. Everybody loves merch. You can get some nice accoutrement, as we say. You can go to Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud and get customized things. Look, Damon even happens to have a disappearing coffee cup that has the Cubs Out Loud Drag Race logo on it. Um, he also happens to be wearing a fabulous shirt that has that. I actually happen to have the drag pride consent is my foreplay lake shirt from that series we've got all sorts of stuff on there and rumor has it we have new shirt designs appearing very soon that we're excited about so feel free to go to zazzle.com slash cubs out loud and check out that stuff uh and if you want to be a supporter we would love you to help support us you can go to patreon.com slash cubs out loud and for a dollar or more a month you can be a patron and get uh, full access to the shows that we do including the pre and post show uh, edits and some other extra special stuff and you get prizes rewards you get Ooh. things that come to your home um Ooh. You can also just give us a tip. You can go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud and just give us a one-time donation. We'll take it. Helps keep the mm -hmm. lights on, as we like to say. If you want to uh, help promote Cubs Out Loud, you can pretty much find us anywhere that a podcast is out there. Cubs Out Loud Drag Race uniquely has its own audio feed for a podcast, so you can actually subscribe that way if you're interested. Damon, if people want to get in touch with you, where would they go? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as theatercub 79 That's T-H-E-A-T-R-E. CUB79. Almost their related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter or Pup Umbra79 on Blue Sky. Those are not safe for work. But a safe for work shit, you can go to DMAGamer79 on TikTok or Twitter. Nice. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabriel73. And with that, uh, we'll be back in a few weeks to discuss the finale. Mm. Uh, find out who joins the Hall of Fame, who wins, do all the charities get money, does Plastique just, like, cash in a lottery ticket, sell, like, you know, her OnlyFans account money? I don't know. Something. We'll see. Maybe she turns to her couple million of followers and she gets them something, you know, pitch in some money to her cause. We'll see. Mm. But with that, uh, we will talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>